Okay. Okay, we are live. And I oh here's Chris. Hey, hey. Hey. Can you hear better? I literally just started the feed, so perfect yeah. timing. Perfect timing. How's it going, Cody? <laughs> yeah, man. Nothing. How about you? Looking at nothing right. nothing like last minute, hey Chris? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Yeah, we didn't give ourselves enough time to get set up, so. No, no, we'll know for next time. But yeah. it's weird because I'm not seeing anybody. Oh, shit. Okay, what? hold on. I gotta... Well, I hadn't actually gone live yet, I guess. I thought I did, but maybe not. Okay, save changes. So I'm not That's sure what that knows. means if we went live. Um, Chris, me, well, I'll check on my phone. I think, yeah, we're live now. Are we? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's weird. I didn't ever notice that the screen is reversed. So, yeah. like, move it's the opposite. Yeah. It's freaking me yeah, out. Right center. Yeah. yeah. Can you guys hear a lot of background noise on my end? No. Not too, no, not too bad. Just a and last there. night we couldn't, uh, we couldn't hear Chris that well, but it seems like it's working now. Yeah. It's like we got a few people joining in here. Working, working as intended. Yeah. You're good. I tried wearing a robe, but it was a kid's robe, and it looked ridiculous. So. Oh, you should have done it anyway. <laughs> I wish I had my uh, mullet. We'll have to save that for another one. Yeah. There's some Tiger King mullets. Yeah. Um, Ooh, I'm just going to go on, guys. I'm having a huge flow. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What? Are you there, Cody? Shoot. Oh, oh there we go. What's we matter? can see you again. Let her flood, I guess. <laughs> a flood? What do you got going on? You froze up there for a minute. You good now? Can you hear us? How do I sound now? Can you, can you hear me better? You sound fine. Okay. Can, can you hear us, Cody? He looks concerned. I know. Can you guys hear me still? Yep. Yeah, can you hear us? Oh, he froze up again. Shit. Do we have any people in here? I can't see what we do. Uh, I show as being 11, 13, uh, but Cody weird, froze up. It doesn't show oh, on the I can't hear you guys anymore. You can't hear us? No. Except we responded to you saying you can't hear yeah, us. I, know. <laughs> I, I, I wish I would have learned sign language at this yeah. point. I only know like can one word. Can you hear us, Cody? There, yeah, not at all, really. Are you are we on your phone or a laptop or what are you working on? I wonder if I should leave and try and come back. Yeah, yeah try maybe. and come back. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Fine. Is this something I said? I don't. I don't know. Apparently, you smell and you talk funny. No, you could. You booted me. Uh, no, well, I did that on accident. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Sorry. Turns out that our uh, initial test yesterday didn't help with uh, technical difficulties, but uh, hopefully we can get Cody back on. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm seeing and hearing everything uh, just fine right now, so hopefully everybody else can. Oh, uh, there's comments. Comments. Hey guys, yeah, I can see the comments. All right, well, yeah, no, I can see them now too. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see, I can. Uh, hey, there we hey, go. Hey, I can see you guys again. Wait. Okay, perfect. So, when you froze up, were you saying something happened at the shop? You were looking all concerned at the floor. Looked like you said a flood or something. Yeah, so literally like 10 minutes before I got on here, one of my hoses in the store exploded, and I had a flood in the store. And I was just sitting in the fish room, and all of a sudden, one of my pumps stopped, and my fish tank started overflowing. <laughs> so I just, I'll deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it. 
Thank you. Yeah, it's rounded now, yeah. so. <laughs> the store is flooding, but he's going to sit and talk to us instead. <laughs> yeah. Well, I fixed the store earlier, but this is just a fish room that's flooded. So no oh, wow, <laughs> Isn't that well, a good I think now that uh, I think now hopefully we've got all these um, uh, technical difficulties sorted sorted out and looks like we've got a fair bit of people in here now but uh, probably why don't we start off kind of from the beginning why don't you tell us about yourself and uh, about your new shop and how you got started in reptile Sure um, I was born really uh, no I was basically uh, <laughs> <laughs> always obsessed with them uh started keeping them when i was real young um started to have like an actual collection probably when i was like eight and then i think i started vending the red deer expo when i was 11. Um, talking about now. ladies right now not reptiles yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so then uh just obsessed with it always kept breeding uh, and then as far as the store goes like as you guys know, anyways, I was previously working at Pisces there, managing the reptile side. And I had actually had, we had like a five-year plan to start up the store out in Red Deer. But I had a, an investigator from the city come to the house uh, and he heard that we were breeding stingrays in the garage. And I guess we we're using too much square footage of a house. Um, so anyways, we had to move. So it kind of just became like a, a five-day plan. And we just found a building, moved out here, and <laughs> did it. <laughs> so that was in Calgary? So, yeah. sorry, like you had already moved to Red Deer and the Stingray project was in Red Deer, or was that in Calgary? Yes, that was my question. Oh, no, yeah, we were still in Calgary living in a house um, with all the animals, and then I was working at Pisces. And somebody had called the city or something, I'm not too sure. Um, and then, yeah, they basically – we had to move because either way it wasn't going to work. We were using too much square footage of a house. So technically it was legally a business um, and they classified it as like a kennel or something. A so then kennel. we, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> so over five days, basically we gave our notice of Pisces and then we spent the month, two weeks of it still working at Pisces. And then we were just doing multiple trips a day to Red Deer. And then uh, by the time we were moved, we opened like two weeks later, opened the store. Nice. It's I'm good that quick. you found a, uh, found a place in Red Deer so quickly then. It was, yeah, total luck of the draw. I literally found it was an ad that had no picture, no description or anything. Uh, and it, it ended up being the perfect place. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and we live upstairs too, so we'll live at the store. That's, so how is that's that? crazy, how but... How does that work out for you, living there and working there? Like, you can't really get away. It's all right. Like, the top floor is an apartment, so there's no animals up there other than the dog. Um, and then I like to work in the snake room late at night anyway, so it's good. Stay here till 2 in the morning and then just mosey up the stairs. Yeah, good to go. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I never leave this building ever, but <laughs> – I think knowing you pretty well, um, I feel like you're not the type of guy that really needs an escape from the reptiles by any means. So yeah. for for you, I would imagine it would be all right uh, just being able to disappear upstairs and not actually getting away from it. Yeah. You'd think there'd be benefits too. You can just putter around and do stuff at your own pace, right? Your own time frame. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it works. Even when the store is open, um, you know, I can be working in the back and stuff while Tori's up front. And then when a customer comes in, I just head up front. Um, just so everybody knows, what are your um, what are your hours at the shop? So during the week, we're open 10 to 8, but we're closed on Mondays and Wednesdays. And on the weekend, we're 11 to 6. Okay. So why Mondays and Wednesdays? I was going to ask ah. the same thing. <laughs> So Wednesdays, I just found like at Pisces, Wednesdays were originally dead uh, until they did the double points. And we worked the first month just being open all the time. And we found the same thing. Like for us, Wednesdays was just a dead day. Uh, and so we wanted to be open during the weekend as well when people weren't working. And then uh, Monday, beginning of the week, same thing. And just with us not having staff or anything, we didn't want to be open seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. 
still. And I'm as Lindsay just mentioned, Wednesday is hump day. So, of course, you want to be uh, not working. <laughs> you got to be off, <laughs> so also, we want to um, also mention uh, Paulo Alves from Brazil is in here watching too. So yeah. Big shout out. To yeah, thanks for joining us. That's Brazil. awesome. Um, we got one question here. Uh, do you have an online presence? Yeah, like as far as like Instagram and Facebook and stuff? Um, yeah. Well, that, yeah. but I, I wonder also, they probably also meant, do you have like a website for doing online orders maybe? Oh, yeah. So the website, Tori is just working on it right now. Um, it, it's the reptileshop.ca. Uh, but it's not uh, not very functional at the moment. She's just getting everything on there still and figuring that out. So right now, anything online is mainly going uh, over Facebook. So we do the Reptile Shop Red Deer is Facebook. And then uh, Instagram, we do uh, it's the underscore reptile underscore shop. Yeah. Um, we'll share um, we'll share the links to that on the page once we finish up with this as well. Um, what, uh, how big is your shop? Uh, <laughs> it's pretty big. Uh, you know, when I asked the landlord, he said he didn't even know the square footage, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> like, I bet I can flip you around for a second here. Right now I'm in the basement in the snake area. I'll flip you around and give you a bit of a pan. Sure. So this is the one room, uh, in the base in one, there's two basements actually. Um, so this is pri this is a private area then, like uh, just yep. for your breathing stock and, and everything else. Yeah, so this is kind of the private part of the basement. And then the way that we have it is upstairs we have um, – let me flip this around again here. Upstairs is split into like three sections. The first half is the store, which is about 50 foot by 50 foot. And then the middle portion is all like our monitor breeding. And then the back half is all fish breeding. So well, I got pretty a good size. Question. A question here um, with the monitors, which monitor species are you currently keeping and which ones are you trying to propagate? What are you breeding? Um, I'd like to breed any of them, but uh, I've got, as far as dwarfs go, I've got yellow Ackies, Kimberly's, which I just got a female Kimberly last night, actually. Um, Pilbara's, I've got Similis, Green Tree, Blue Tree, and then I've got uh, the Mangroves, Peach Throats, Torch Monitors, uh, Roughneck. And I think that's about it. Black or brown? One? <laughs> that's a fairly extensive <laughs> list. Is that yeah. all? <laughs> What's that? Is that? Is, oh, is that all? Yeah. You have yeah. A, <laughs> Is it black or brown roughnecks? Black. Oh, black. Nice. Yeah, I actually, during the move here, I had a gravid female, and it, it, it was the worst loss probably. Um, I lost her while she was nesting. She was trying to lay eggs, and it turns out she had an egg. The first egg was literally lodged sideways right at the vent, and she didn't pull through, unfortunately. But she had eight eggs in her, which was uh, unfortunate. She was a great lizard, but... Yeah, yeah so, that sucks. I lost a female black line that way. Her first egg, same thing. It was sideways. Died yeah, in, in, the, in the bin as she was trying to lay. Yeah, it makes you not want to breed, but yeah. happens. Yeah. yeah. That's tough. Unfortunately. Um, got a question for you. Are you planning on getting any crocodile skinks? I did just recently sell a couple. Um, I do have the option to get one at the moment. Uh, it'd be somewhat high priced, uh, but I think with all this uh, COVID stuff, I really can't see too many croc skinks coming in for, for a while anyway. No, I would think anything coming in imports would probably be hard if they're not yeah, in already, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, why don't you tell us about your store? Like what, what are your main stock? Like, obviously you've got a lot of breeding projects of your own, but what are you selling at the shop or you've got a wide variety of everything or. Yeah, I can head up there, um, and give you guys a shot of that. Basically. Actually, hang on a second. 
while you're down there, is there anything down here that you want to show us that's really cool that maybe people aren't used to seeing? Because I know you've got some really cool stuff that you keep and work with that a lot of people maybe don't know about before we head upstairs. Let me... I saw a big Looking. pond. Yeah, there's a big uh, red tail catfish in there. That's his bathtub. Uh, let me flip you around. <laughs> I'll show you. The benefits of living in your shop—you get yeah. up with the fish. Having a having a bath with a giant catfish. I'd be terrified. Woma? No, blackhead. Uh, yeah, blackhead. Yeah, I haven't got all my lights hooked up yet since we moved. But so this girl. I'm thinking she's gravid. She is 100% okay. 100% head hypo, uh, possible head albino, and she was bred to a 100% head albino male. So I'm crossing my fingers there. Um, what else we got? We actually, I have some Maclot pythons due to hatch today. Oh, cool! That means that just happened right now. Right. Yeah, that would <laughs> oh, I, see I had my egg. fingers crossed. I could see some slit uh, eggs there. Uh, what the back? No, just no? all the uh, those are lines I drew on oh, them. For yeah, and uh, nothing yet. Well, is there? Let me see this other one. Is that just the wine cooler for yet. your incubator? Yeah, yeah, I do the wine cooler uh, with heat tape and a fan in the bottom, and then hooked up to a hooked up to a herb stack there. Perfect. Uh, let me see what else I can find in here. I feel like a few of the ladies here that don't like snakes are going to be mortified using a wine cooler for snake eggs. I know. <laughs> Amy shaking what her else head. Are you using for, man? Wait, no, I can I can feel Lindsay upstairs, and I'm pretty sure Rach is probably saying the same thing right now. Too. <laughs> Some, uh, green tree pythons, emerald tree boas. Uh, Amazon tree boas. Do you still have any uh, the Paradise Flying Snakes? No. I got out of the Flying Snakes. I I hatched a bunch of babies, and they all died while they were hatching, and it kind of oh, shot under my skin a little bit. So. Yeah. No, I hear you. I'm surprised you even got to that point. Those things are hard to keep alive, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they can be – you know, for me, it was the vine snakes that were the worst, man. Oh, really? Like, I had a few litters of vine snakes, and those things, I was buying 20 dart frogs a week uh, to feed the babies. Dart which frogs? Sucked. Yeah, that's the only thing they'd eat, man, yeah. Jesus. That's that's pretty pricey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <that's a good laughs> <thing. laughs> hey, hey, where's Lucas when you need him? Yeah, exactly. I know, right? <laughs> Good deal on some feeders. Let's hope um, I don't get musk on here. I got the. That is absolutely Dominican red mountain boas. Oh, a rainbow snake. Um, yeah, I do yeah. have some Dominicans. They're actually. Uh, is that Zeno Daniel. Pelvis I'm looking at? Yep. Nice. Oh, literally just musked musk me in the eye. As they do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Give me a Put sec here. All uh, having a musk in the eye. So, so now we're getting Damn a tour is. of uh, Cody's bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just see if I can find a Dominican that's not in shed. How many Dominicans did he got? A, a big group or? Yeah. So actually, this one just shed. Uh, Oh, nice. Yeah, it doesn't really pick up the color on them, but no. They're uh, so these were or are um, Daniels, like monkey tail Daniel. Right. Yeah, I was gonna ask actually if you got from Daniel. Yeah, so he partnered up with me on uh, these guys, the Bahama boas. Um, were those from the Chinese crocodile lizards? He brought them in from Florida, didn't he? Crutchfield, was it, or no? No, um, it was through Sean Halfwick, I thought. Oh, okay, Halfwick, yeah. Yeah, I can't even remember. It's I know there's one male is um, Tom Crutchfield stock. Like, he's really yeah. red. Yeah. Uh, and then I believe the other ones were Paul Bodner and Jeff Murray. 
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Man, I stink now from that Sunbeam snake. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's a good thing, thing that we're we're uh, exercising our six foot distance, and by six foot we mean two hours away, and uh, we don't have to smell <laughs> it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can go back to the store now, man. I'm gonna draw the customers out. <laughs> uh -huh. Sure. Um, somebody was asking above, um, I clicked on, I want to, your Massix, where can I get one? But somebody else was asking uh, or mentioning above that you potentially have uh, some Euro eggs. Um, yeah, so I've got, I had 23 Mali Euro eggs in the incubator. Um, some of them went bad. I think we have 15 left that are looking solid now. And then I actually have a female Saharan laying right now, or at least getting ready to lay right now. So nice, cool. I've got yeah, a couple of Saharans as well that are hopefully going to lay with man and stuff. I hope you have a lot for that, man. Yeah, there. Are, I've hatched two clutches from the Saharan so far, and the Mallies we uh, we actually just got them um, yeah. not that long ago. So I've only had one. The Saharans, one clutch of Saharans, and uh, all the babies were gorgeous. Yeah, they're hilarious, man. Yeah, they look awesome. Little fat bodies. Um, yeah. Jackson Overly is asking if there was a snake as big as a human and it can talk, what would you say to it? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it needs another back. Drink there's, before there's, I there's a lot of snakes bigger than humans, so. But I guess the talking part is like. Yeah, I'm not a very big guy. Like, I mean, a lot of my snakes are bigger than me. <laughs> Can I shake your hand? Oh, shoot. You don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> I'd um, get over here. Yeah. I don't know, what, what would you say to a snake? <laughs> yeah. Story about keeping you in a cage. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about being in a How do you feel about boat? everything? Yeah. How do you yeah. feel about your accommodations? Is there anything I can do for you to make your do you, need a yeah. do you need a towel? Yeah. Oh, here's another question. I'll pop it up here. How can I convince my boyfriend to let me get a snake? <laughs> <laughs> I'm reserving my answer for later. Yeah. yeah. Well, on the professional side, uh, I don't ask. If I can't or for forgiveness, I just get it, and it's a test yeah, of love. Yeah. If he leaves you, he wasn't meant to be. <laughs> if he really loves you, he would be all right with it, just saying. That's right. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I would like, what's his issue with you having a snake? I can't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I can only think of bad directions to go with that, so I'm going to shut up right now. My first question would be, can he grow a beard and is he a real man? Ah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought about, I should I beard, say but... that? I, know. I thought about maybe I shouldn't say that given that Cody still can't grow a beard. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm losing it on the top, too. <laughs> he, is, he is 12 going on 40, so it's probably good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I can remember when I started, um, when I, I mean, I'd probably been building cages for a few years, but I can remember Cody as a young guy um, breeding snakes at his house. And I, can, I don't even know how old you would have been. Pro my guess is probably around 14 at the time. Um, yeah, like I said, I started doing the Red Deer show when I was 11. And I know after my place burnt, you had donated a big cage to me. Yeah. And I was 13 at that time. Oh, see, I was not far off. Wait, Greg, this is yeah. a nice thing. What are you talking about? He's a big jerk. Yeah. <laughs> it depends who you ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my employees oh. say I'm an asshole. Oh, we might have lost Cody here. Silence. That's an odd <laughs> frame for him to be frozen on that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you're back again. Are you still in your basement, Cody? No. No, I went in the fish room. Fish room's a bit of a dungeon, so you don't get much internet in there. That's the issue. Okay. So uh, tell us a little more about your shop. So I didn't even know you have fish in there as well then? At the moment, not in the shop. Um, I'm working on a room right now, which 
speaking of leaks, I had a 450 gallon spring of leak that I just fixed today. So I've got to figure that out, but I am opening up a, a room of the store that'll just have like monster fish. And then that's where I'll sell the baby stingrays out of as well. So what kind of monster you, fish? Sorry. What's that? What are you thinking, are you thinking for monster fish? Like catfish? Basically, yeah, just the ones that I have. So like the prune shark, red tail catfish, arowanas. Um, but I'll probably only be selling the stingrays, like the babies that I've got. And then uh, I wouldn't mind bringing in arowanas to sell too. Which stingrays are you working with? Um, I've got some black diamonds, some marbles, some Matoros, uh, a bunch of hybrids. I just had some born this morning actually too, nice. which were nice. Hystrix Matoro hybrids. Sweet. That's cool. I didn't even know those were being bred in captivity at all, yeah. but how, how big are they eventually, like what kind of, what kind of setup, like how big of a, of a tank would you need for, for one of those? I think he froze again. There we go. Oh, there you go. Did you catch that, Cody? I feel like he didn't. Uh, I think he froze again. Can you hear us? Uh, we're, we're all we're all losing. Yeah. Are you good, Chris? I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Cody, I think it's, he's in a he's in yeah. a fish tank. Uh, there you go. There we go. I don't know if you heard that or not, but uh, working. How how big do those rays get, and what sort of uh, how many gallon tank would you need for an adult? That kind of thing. All right, is it going again? Yep. Can you hear us, Cody? Yeah. Sorry, my internet quit working there for a second. Okay. So I was seeing if big? I could get off Wi-Fi so I could go show you the rays, but uh, not going to happen. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what uh, what sort of uh, what size of a tank would you need? And how big are those rays? Go? Pretty big. Like my biggest one is uh, I think twenty three or twenty four inches across, and they're right now in uh, I believe it's nine foot by four foot, and there's four of them in there. Oh, wow. And then I've got uh, a couple tanks that are six foot by 30 inches and a couple that are four foot by eight foot. Now, are those more grow up tanks, like not for adults, just to kind of transition? Or is that like a final size? Uh, the four foot by eight foots are for the adults. Right. And then uh, the six foot by 30 inch ones are from, I've got like five grow outs in them. So it's just crazy. Heavy How long have you crazy. been uh, keeping them for? Uh, not too long with those guys uh, since 2012. So eight years. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, they're like dogs. What, they'll um, literally come to. Oh, sorry. What's that? That's oh, they'll come to the glass and beg for food and stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. As soon as they see you. Are they? Do they recognize certain people, or is it just any kind of people looking for food? I, th I think it's anything. I don't have too many people come through like my private stuff. Um, like the monitors know for sure when other people are around. They act different, right. um, but the rays. I think it's just a body. They see a body and they want food. Right. They um, do they eat a ton then? Oh yeah. So like I could feed one ray, I could feed one ray easily 10 smelts like back to back and she'd eat them. Um, but I usually feed them like three or four. How often do you, is that like a daily thing or is that a few times a week or? I feed daily, yeah. And then the babies all feed like twice a day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Very high metabolism. <laughs> Yeah, rays always look cool. I've never kept any uh, any rays or anything. Yeah, they're once you keep rays, man, none of your other fish matter anymore. They all start to leave. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Especially if they're begging for food, they're like a big puppy, right? Oh yeah, I my biggest one. She would splash you. You'd be standing two feet away from the tank, and all of a sudden your back would be soaked because you'd go up on the wall and just spray water out the top. That's funny. So they're funny. 
What, um, like, I mean, you keep a wide variety of stuff, um, and I've never had the chance to, I, I definitely want to get up to the shop and maybe uh, me and Chris get a private tour around, but uh, um, yeah. what what would be your kind of prize, like, what's your, mo like, what what gets you the most excited, I guess, in your shop? Whatever I'm looking at at the moment, I guess. <laughs> um, I guess for me, it'd probably be the white lip pythons. I don't know what it is with them, but I really like the white lips. Oh, there's how many? Uh, how many do you have right now? Uh, five blacks and two golds. So, hoping to produce them. I've got a pair of blacks together right now, so and they've been getting on well, but. I don't know with them. I never get my hopes up. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a season for everybody right now. Like it's crazy with like just in our shop right now, the amount of incubator requests we've been getting lately. Um, like the guys probably right now, just on like in the order sheet, probably have like eight different incubators on the go. So people are definitely ramping up. Yeah. I see a lot of posts with your guys' incubators. Yeah. Yeah, Billy just ordered two more. Um, I think we have – Chris, where was that one going um, next week? It's going to, like, Omaha or something? We've got – some like, it's funny. The All over the U.S., we've got Georgia. We've got Ohio. We've got – there's a few – I'm drawing a blank right now. Yeah, there's, there's a handful of them going down to the U.S., which is a little yeah. surprising, but – it's funny because the U.S. exchange rate really hurts us right now, but it also gives us an advantage. Um, we're selling a lot of stuff into the U.S. right now just because the exchange works in their, I guess, in their benefit. Yeah, that makes sense. But for us Canadians, it sucks because all the products are getting more expensive to bring in. Yeah. Yeah. So we got some of them here too now. I know these. We got people from Australia watching us right now. Oh, sweet! Checking out your shop. Um, well, why don't, yeah, like, why don't while we're talking, why don't you kind of do a quick tour? Yeah, yeah. For the parts yeah. that have internet, apparently. The what? The parts that have internet service, anyways. Yeah. Stay on the stage. Yeah. The, <laughs> stay on the fish room. Yeah. Yeah, I'll flip you around. I'll show you some of the monitors. Don't mind the cages. I just, I had to put new doors, so I just used scrap garbage out of the ground. <laughs> a little embarrassing, but there's nice lizards in here. So let us know while you're while you're showing them if you can let us know which you know which monitors they are for people that are watching. That maybe yeah. So this, uh, I finally monitors. just got this. This uh, okay, okay. This is a uh, a male torch monitor, Branis Obor. Uh, he's a bit of a psycho, but <laughs> this should be one of only two in Canada that I'm aware of. Wow. And I'm just going to close him. I'll show you guys the female. Super inquisitive so the, already. Oh, yeah. The female uh, lays eggs every four months. So now that I've got him, I'll pair them and try and make something. But I've just been ramping them up to pair them up, so they're only thinking about food right now. But, well, while you're doing that, we got a question from somebody here. Uh, have you got any tegus? Uh, tegus, no. I kind of lost interest in the tegus. I'm a bit more of a fan of the uh, really long, slender, long neck stuff. So I do get in tegus here and there, like um, like for sale. But... As far as breeding goes, not nothing like that. Surprising how many monitor species you listed off there. Like that must take up a fair bit of space in your shop. Um, yeah, I've got basically like the room I'm in right now is my large monitor room, my a couple monitors, and then I have a dwarf monitor room as well. But this is a uh, Thamilis, a New Guinea spotted monitor she's pretty cool they're not offended yeah. what's that 
You're not offended by being called dwarf monitors? <laughs> yeah, some of them. And then uh, everybody wants a dwarf. There's a. Uh, I don't know if you can see in there, but that's a male uh, black roughneck. <laughs> that one's full grown. Uh, pretty close. He's like two years old, and he's a bit over four foot. So, and then you know, got the. So what sort uh, of the Andy Eggman had asked, how big do they get? I'm not sure if it was for the last one you showed or the one before. So all the ones that I've shown were full grown. Uh, the torch monitors are about three, three feet. Uh, the Similis monitors, they're tiny. They're like, uh, I don't even know what to compare them to. Between the size of a leopard gecko and a bearded dragon, you know? They oh, fit wow. on your hand. They're like an so Aki monitor. Yeah. Like a foot and a half kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say she's mm, eight inches without the tail. So, and then the roughnecks, you're looking at five foot for a male. Yeah. Um, what else? Just peeking. All the aromastics are hiding. Ackies are hiding. So, what's, which uh, aromastic species are you keeping there besides the Saharans and the Nallies? Just that. Oh, okay. um, I have one pair that I don't even know if I should publicly say it, but. Uh, it's a Mali male and a Saharan female, but I just, somebody gave them to me and they'd been together for like seven years. So I just felt too bad to separate them. So. <laughs> but they're so hard to so breed. It's so unlikely to get hybrids. Oh, I know they, she only lays in fertile. So. It's monitor food. Yeah, literally anything. I can't imagine with all those monitors you're feeding, Bill, it's going to be astronomical. Yeah, it gets up there. I feed like a lot of different stuff. Like I feed a lot of chicks, mice. Uh, I feed grub pie. Uh, I literally, I had a litter of snow boas the other night. Um, and I had a couple stillborns. So torch monitors got those. Yeah, um, yeah and that's, so, I mean, it's. it's for people that are watching, like that's, I mean, it's, it's wasteful to not, you know, if you get some stillborn babies, I mean, it's, it's a good food source for certain animals and why would you put it to waste, right? So. Yeah. Better than in the compost. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Wow. <clears throat> and it's, I mean, it sucks to have those stillborns, but at least they're going to good use. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it keeps you from feeding other live prey. So, I mean, I think it's a win-win. Yeah. Yeah, I took a bite from one of those monitors about a month ago, so I definitely would not want to be a live prey item with them. Oh, yeah? <laughs> how, how bad did it get you? Pretty good. I, I was leaking. Uh, yeah. One of those torch got a hold of my thumb. Yeah, a little, little donation there? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the teeth on those things are out of this world on the torches. Yeah. Yeah, we, we we learned that at uh, Reptile Expo in Red Deer, I don't know, about five years ago, Jim had a young employee who thought he knew what he was doing and uh, ended up with quite a few stitches. <laughs> From that piece, Uh I don't remember what it was, but uh, we got video of it, so it was worthwhile. I'm pretty sure it was the piece, if I remember correctly. <laughs> as soon as he said he got this, somebody was smart enough to know better and get a phone to record it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I ended up with that peach throat actually. Oh, did you? Yep. Nice. Willie might need to go out, Amy. I hear him. So here's a question too. Um, I mean I I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but anything venomous? Or anything that you've got. I guess besides the do you have vine snakes now or no? Um no, I I don't have any more of the vines. Um I just sold the last three um, flying snakes that I had. Uh, I don't have false water cobras anymore either. Um, so yeah, nothing really about a rear fang now. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting more false water cobras, but you need some actually I'm just gonna. Them. Yeah, hey, I guess you're probably producing them, aren't you? I'm hoping to get some more babies this year. Yeah, lots of people asking for hog nose. 
Here, I'll uh, the shop's empty now. I'll flip it around and I'll give you guys a bit of a a view here. Yeah, for, for sure, people, um, while you you're uh, touring, um, here's another question: What's the worst bite you've had, and from what reptile? A green iguana. Uh, <laughs> oh, I had a six yeah. foot green iguana take the end of my finger, and I had a claw finger for a couple of years. And then I had a couple of reconstructive surgeries and it's still ugly as a sin, man. It's, <laughs> it's a, it's an ugly finger, but so and even one, oddly enough was the worst bite. Yeah. It's funny. People think cause they're, they're herbivores, that, but man, they got some nasty sharp little teeth that are for tearing leaves, like thick leaves and stems. You do oh not yeah. You see that muscle inside of their mouth, man. It's huge. Oh, it's a big lizard too, right? Like they, they, they don't get it sometimes. No, yeah, they, they do damage. Oh, got oh, yeah. these clowns over here. <laughs> so, so while you're doing that, well, well, for people that That's are from better Alberta, half, Alberta, right? So for people What's that aren't that? Alberta, we can't keep venomous in Alberta um, without permits and stuff. And you basically need to be the zoo uh, to get those kind of permits. It's almost impossible to get. So. Typically, most people, most collections don't have anything better that's property of movies, giants, that kind of thing. Yeah, nothing that can do damage anyway. Yeah. It's kind of cool. What do you got in there? A little helmeted iguana there. Oh, cool. Yeah, they call them helmeted iguana, or um, I think they also call it a helmeted basilisk, too. Right. Eh, a little here's a little baby peach throat monitor I'm growing up for breeding. Thanks. Cody, how long were you how long did you work at Pisces for? Uh, I was there for eight years. Okay. Were you there yeah. in the old shop or did you start after they moved to their mm -hmm. new shop? Uh, I was just here for the new shop. When I first got into reptiles, um, I thought, oh, it'd be cool to work at Pisces or like, you know, a pet shop in general. But um, I lasted like three months and they kept I kept like having to work in the fish room and I hated the fish. So I didn't I didn't stick around too long. Yeah, I felt the same the first couple of weeks I was in the fish room, too. Is that one of the mountain dragons we're looking at there? What is that? So this is a Acanthosaurus natali. It's one of the newer species that is kind of in captivity, cool. but they call it like a, a giant mountain horn or a giant crested. There's a female. It kind of looks there. like those void, void forest dragons almost, but yeah. not as colorful. I like the mountain horns. Yeah. yeah, same kind of style, same genus as the mountain horns. Right. Um, there's a Chinese crocodile lizard in here. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm just looking. Is that one of Daniel's? Yep. So I took uh, two pairs from Daniel. I don't hear much from him lately. Is he um, still keeping quite a bit, or did he scale back quite a bit? He scaled back a ton. Um, I think he just, like, yeah. the, he works doing paving and stuff, so he's super busy guy. Uh, and then, you know, he's got, you know, the family and everything. So he uh, basically scaled back on most stuff. I know he kept a couple uh, very important snakes to himself. And uh, I know he kept some monkey tails back. And then basically whatever else he kept pretty well came over to my place. So, and we've got some emeralds together as well. Nice. Here, here's a question here. Um, do you keep any inverts, any spiders, anything else? Not in the personal collection. In the store, we've got some. Um, like I got uh, Indian ornamental, Mexican red knee, and uh, pink toe right now. Uh, I'd like to build a, a unit specifically for all the kind of creepy crawlies. But, um, yeah, nothing personally. We might know a guy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm inspecting a shop, and I've noticed a few of our cages there, so that's yeah. a good sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, uh, there's a handful of them. <laughs> yeah. That's good.
Um, you, uh, the one big cage that you were doing, uh, the, was kind of more naturalistic setups. And I know at Pisces, they had quite a few. Was that, uh, like, did you do the majority of those setups or is it somebody else? I did all of them yet. That's what I thought. Yeah, that was, uh, that was one of the funnest parts there. Cause there's just endless resources there, right? Like yeah. plants, anything you want, you just pluck it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to miss that. Well, now you're, getting paid, you're getting paid to have fun there. So that, I mean, that would be a benefit too. Yeah. Now I got to pay to build those displays. So that's why they're not as snazzy yet. <laughs> <laughs> Funny when it's somebody I else, think, it's a lot yeah. easier when somebody else's money than your own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say from our perspective, and I'm sure Chris could agree, like the funnest builds are the ones that have that naturalistic aspect oh. to them. Like, building PVC cages can get tiring, but like being able to get creative and do those, you know, natural backgrounds and, and fit it out to kind of suit the animals a little more is obviously the best part about it. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, it's good. Yeah. A little nicer. Than display tanks that are dressed up a little bit at least, you know, people like, like to see that kind of stuff when they come in. Yeah. Um, I guess we should touch on this because I don't know if people are coming and going. Um, Marlene Robinson just asked, what's your business called? I'm looking for a tegu-sized reptile. Can I find you online? So maybe uh, just kind of recap your business and uh, your, your details. Yeah, so the store is just called The Reptile Shop. Um, on Facebook, we're The Reptile Shop Red Deer. Uh, and then Instagram, uh, the underscore reptile underscore shop. As far as uh, tegu size reptiles, like there's a variety of stuff that we can get. Tegus, in my opinion, for size wise, are probably the best because otherwise you're looking at, you know, savanna monitors, iguanas, uh, all of that kind of stuff, which can be a bit of a handful, whether whether it's housing or or not. Um, so tegus would probably be the best for something that large. But um, we are seeing right. that a lot of the reptile shows are starting to limit the bigger lizards as well. Um, obviously, for a long time, uh, iguanas kind of have uh, kind of taken a back door to the uh, to the reptile shows just because their size and people don't understand their requirements. But I'm seeing a lot of uh, uh, shows that are now starting to ban savanna monitors and and any other monitors that can you know get a lot bigger that. Uh, I guess kind of get underhoused and underappreciated. Um, I think I think that's probably a good thing, but it kind of sucks when you go to a show and it's more limited, like you know, to more uh, just ball pythons, crested geckos, and all the standard stuff. Yeah, that's. T I almost feel like you should have done something like uh, captive bred. You can have captive bred, and then that encourages people to actually try and produce instead of just you know, 100% wild caught. So that's kind of how I feel about it. But. Yeah. I mean, Edmonton's doing that and it's, it's, I mean, it's a positive thing and a negative. A lot of people complain that it shows like that. Again, you're stuck with crested geckos, ball pythons, boas. Yeah. And, I think that goes um, against having so it becomes a little harder. But... Go ahead, Chris. Oh, sorry. I, I think that kind of goes against having variety with a lot of, Stuff that comes in, like you get more variety. That, and it's long-term captive. You want stuff that's well-established, looks healthy. You don't want somebody, literally, as people have in the past, that, you know, but literally bringing stuff in from the airport and driving it right to the show and flipping it to people. Um, oh God, yeah. Well, well I mean, in terms of ones that you were going to ban from the show, like say, you know, tegus or or different monitors, like instead of outright banning maybe those species. If you can produce captive bread, then you can have that maybe. But it's hard for me because I'm a guy who's breeding them. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, it's funny because being that I've been in the industry and same thing with, well, both of you um, having been there for the last almost 20 years, um, I can remember shows where people are literally taking their animals right from the airport and putting them on their table. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that's happening as much anymore. Uh, I'm yeah. sure it still is happening, but uh, it's definitely not as bad as it used to be. I mean, I can think of literally full tables, full animals that were, 
looking like crap and and you know severely dehydrated and literally they just came from the airport yeah here's a good, here's a good question we have for you cody we've answered this a lot of times but uh here's a question from, from australia um what's a good starter reptile if you have no experience so what would, somebody walks into your store and asks that question what's your answer A handful, like, I mean, I guess for me, trying to avoid the typical bearded dragon, leopard gecko, crested gecko answer. Um, right. You know, I'm a huge fan of fat tail geckos, like in that direction. I find they're a little bit calmer even than a leopard gecko usually. Same care, no special lighting required for the most part. Um, as far as snakes go, you know. You get sand boas. Um, if you find rosy boas, are really good. They stay super small. They don't have an insane feeding response a lot of the time. Um, you know, blue tongue skinks. Uh, I think blue tongue skinks are great. And uromastics, because as long as you're providing the right light and temperature, you know, they don't eat bugs. They very, very, very rarely bite. Um, you know, if they hit you with the tail, it doesn't even hurt. Yeah. I love your so, answering, like, pretty much everything I work with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was not. I didn't set fixed. that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'd say some of those really, like try obviously trying to avoid you know the straight up leopard gecko, crested gecko, because obviously it's hard to feed a crested gecko, right? Yeah, and I mean those are great. Those make great pets too. There's a reason that people say that. But I mean, yeah, for me, I, I like a little more of the the odd stuff and everything too. So. I try and steer people towards find stuff that you really like uh, to work with. And <laughs> sorry, we're getting a refill here. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, just just the stuff that that you have an interest in because this is like a long term thing. So it's fine if there's some things that maybe are easier to care for, but people with those interests, if they're not interested in that animal and have it just because they feel it's easier to care for, that's not gonna play out long term and then the animal's gonna have been a rescue or, or surrendered or whatever. You want some people are gonna be interested in that, that well, put the time and the effort in to learning about and to care for. And for me that's kind of what I say is find something you love and work with those. Yeah. I, th I think that's the biggest thing is uh, finding an interest yourself, not going by somebody else's re uh, recommendation because it might not suit you. Um, you. Obviously, there are some animals that work well with, you know, not having very much experience, but it depends if you're talking about um, being cared for by an eight or 10 year old kid versus, uh, versus you know, uh, an 18 year old that's looking to get rid of, or sorry, get get into reptiles for the first time obviously there there's a bigger responsibility level there yeah yeah it depends on the type of person if you're a person who you know pays attention to detail and does your research well, really there's a lot that you could start with that are excellent but if you're kind of oblivious you forget about things here and there then you know you might go with a little more <laughs> limited span of animals <laughs> yeah. being honest with yourself right that's what it comes down to yeah. Well, and I and I also think I mean there's a lot of people, maybe not as much. It's kind of died down now, but like for a few years, the ball python market was everybody was getting into it because they thought that there was going to be big money in it. And for some people, yeah. there is. But you got to get into it for the love of the animals versus seeing dollar signs. Yeah, if you're not super passionate about it, right? As soon as something goes wrong, you're gonna want to dump it, or you're gonna forget about it easy, or yeah, you gotta yeah. be excited about it. You know? Yeah, um, like just to, for example, in in Calgary alone, I think I started in about 2000, um, so we're going on 20 years now, and Chris has been around a lot longer because he's old. <laughs> yeah. um, but. Like, it's funny that, uh, like, you think of the people who have come and gone in the industry who were, like, you know, became a, a quasi-business and started breeding and selling. But, like, for the majority, you can count on two hands who's still around and still involved in the industry. Definitely. Yeah, even since I've been doing it, it's a quarter of the faces. Yeah. Yeah. There's always new faces. Uh but a lot of them come and go pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. 
so what else do you got to show up? So I'm getting yelled at. I spilled some. I'm, I'm downstairs in the in the wife's uh, spa nail room. Uh, and he just spilled a twenty-two dollar bottle of polish. Apparently, I tipped over a <laughs> What are you doing, man? <laughs> Got some, I had um, something to say, but maybe I won't. Uh, maybe I'll keep that comment to myself. <laughs> Why would you stop now? <laughs> There's a red tail cat. Yeah, he's crazy. He's a lunker. So that's a, quite the pond you've got there. How, so that's the, uh, how big is that pond? Uh, this one's only 300 gallon. It's six foot by four foot. Yeah, only. <laughs> and then it also functions as a bathtub. What's that? Oh, yeah. It also functions as your bathtub. Yeah, that's your bathtub, too. Swimming yeah, it fits me and Tori both in here. <laughs> <laughs> You just got to watch the temperature isn't too hot for the catfish, eh? Yeah. <laughs> eh, Careful. Yeah, that guy, he eats anything, man. You get like, even that you could have like a mouse or a chick or something that didn't get eaten. And the second it touches the water, it's gone. Well, voracious, eh? Which I well, normally feed him. The thing is, it's hard to tell the thing. It looks pretty big. How big would you say it is? Uh, he's about 30 inches. They, they top out like massive, right? Like, does they get really, really big? In the wild? Yeah, oh, like four yeah. foot at least. Yeah. Nah, how old is, cool. how old is it? That one, uh, I'm sure you guys know of, uh, Mitch from Bow Valley Aquariums. Uh, that was his red tail. He grew it up for two years uh, until he passed. And then I ended up taking uh, his large fish, which that was one of them. Sorry, did, uh, and I might have known this, but did, did Mitch pass away? Yeah. Yeah, about okay. a year I, ago. I, th I think I kind of remember that. Is, is, the, is the business still running or it just shut down completely? Uh, it shut down before he passed and okay. he was just doing it out of, he got a place with a shop in the yard. And so he was just doing like the Kijiji stuff. Yeah. But I think Bow Valley shut down a long time ago. I had, I had talked to his mom and this was probably about five plus years ago offering that if they ever were interested in selling, I might be interested, but at the time he is kind of uh, a sinking ship and uh, I'm probably happy that I never got involved in it. Yeah. It's too bad. I there remember was. when I moved here in 89 going to Bow Valley seeing the big alligator and all the cool stuff there. Yeah, it was a cool place. I remember seeing that before they uh, took that guy. Where the, the Cayman that he had at least in that last shot. Yeah, I thought he had. Did he not have an American alligator? Maybe I'm misremembering. But I thought he had I'm an pretty sure they used to have all of that. Like, yeah, there was a lot of different stuff there. Yeah, I think they had like the false gharials apparently at one point years and years ago. Crazy, but I don't. Know. <laughs> that was kind of before all the law. I mean, he was he was had all that stuff before any of the laws started uh, yeah. started happening anyway, so. Yeah, that's pre-regulations, but I'm pretty watching. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think Tim Burton yeah. even got his, uh, didn't his, I can't remember if it was a retic that Tim had and it was through him or something. Um, I think he got it. Um, hey, can you grab my phone charger? He... Apparently had that, and I guess any permits that were like grandfathered before '92 apparently were transferable. Yeah, not anymore. But yeah, at the time they were. Yeah, yeah they and that's how he had that uh, spectacle came in at one point as well. Yeah, yeah. So here's a question, uh, man. Do you have some yeah, I was just gonna. <laughs> I. 
I can get lots of axolotls. I honestly haven't brought them in at the moment because there's not very good uh, air exchange in the shop right now. So I would cook them if I brought them in here. So it's pretty warm. Oh man, I have to open the door all throughout the day. Otherwise it'll hit 87 in the shop because it's those Florida ceiling windows, right? Right. So what's summer going to be like there? Uh, that is why when I was panning through the store, there was a big pond in there, a turtle pond. Mm -hmm. I'm literally in the middle of draining it right now to take it out because of the humidity. And then also uh, installing air conditioning. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Would, um, do you have a guy already for that? What's that? There's a, there's a guy that I know Jim has used before that you might want to contact for uh, good pricing on air conditioning. He's a reptile oh, guy, so. Okay, I haven't looked into it yet. Yeah, I know those can get pretty expensive, but uh, the the prices I had heard were pretty affordable. So. Well, it's money well spent, and if you're going to lose animals, uh, that's going to cost you in the long run. It pays for itself in our right? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. And you're not as tired at the end of the day when it's not that hot. So. <laughs> well, and, and I mean, if you're hot now, just wait till the summer. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Winter time, so. yeah. Well, today it was 15 or 16 actually here. Yeah. It was nice out today, but I think we're getting snow or rain tomorrow. Canada. <laughs> it's so fine. We all live in Eagle. Uh, Brenda Granite. I don't know if you can see this one or not. Hey guys, if you're starting your own business, either from a storefront or home base, what would you advise for enclosure, tracks, etc.? In my of, opinion, all matching and stackable, super easy to clean, so you're not running around with different, you know, maintenance for each type of cage and, you know, front opening, stackable, and all the same. You know, if the insides are set up different, but that, that was my biggest thing. Yeah, I would say either PVC or glass just for the sake of uh, being able to easy, easy to clean. And uh, um, like with wood, I mean, you've got a limited lifespan with anything wood. Um, I would say that those are probably the two best options. 100%. Yeah, if yeah. I start using like, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I would say too, with like, in terms of backgrounds and everything, like if you're doing like the spray foam backgrounds and stuff in tanks that you have different animals cycling through all the time, um, you know, that can also be difficult too, right? Because your, your risk is so high because you can't fully sanitize the whole thing. So basic for the yeah. store, if it's a store. Yeah. yeah, that becomes a vector for that disease transmission. Like that's something, if, yeah, it, it's like for... For display tanks or for like a home collection, it's amazing. But yeah, for like a, a store where you're rotating stock, you know, how much coming in, coming out, that that becomes really uh, cost prohibitive. Like you've got to like that's man hours of people scrubbing and cleaning, and it's never going to get properly yeah. completely. Uh, if you've got other stuff coming in and out all the time, you know, that's that's a tough tough thing to do. What I was going to say, I mean, if you're talking from a pet store perspective, I'd say as bare bones as possible um, for your rotating stock. Um, obviously, like what I appreciated with Pisces the most is all the display tanks. Um, but I think you do that for the animals that are in store and they're um, literally display only because, uh, you know, animals that are changing out, like Chris um, said, anything that you're having to sanitize, any of those naturalistic setups, if, if you have a disease or something, go, a parasite go through there, it's hard to sanitize properly. Yeah, you get mites in there and you're toast. I think a thing too, like yeah. with, for example, for stores, like if I was to open a store, which I, I don't have and have no interest in doing at the moment, um, I would probably have glass, for some of the display tanks where you could you could where you could change like a background on the outside of it so you can have those photo you know we've, we've done a bunch of those where like photo mural backgrounds but oh, they're, yeah. they're on the outside of the tank so you're not having to clean that like you're, you're cleaning the glass but you get that look 
without having to have the extra stuff to scrub and clean in there. It would make maintenance a lot quicker and easier and still dress it up to make it look nicer. So a lot of your, even your standard tanks that have just stuff in for rotating stock, you could at least make it look nicer that way without having to do any extra work to clean. Agreed, yeah. I thought. Yeah, and you can you can get those as static clean clings um, versus like adhesive backgrounds that you can you know be able to pull it off and and replace it as you know as you need and for whatever animal. Yeah. Um, here's another question: How many reptiles do you have in your personal collection? Um, snakes. So there's around uh, probably a bit shy of 150 snakes. And then monitors, I think it's at 18 now. And then six year mastics, something like that. You know, somebody has a big collection, they break it down by reptile type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think at the shop we're about fifty, right around fifty somewhere. Yeah. What do you yeah. have now? I'm I'm down to around forty or so. Again, I was up in the hundreds. I think it was three or four hundred. I can't remember now, but Three or four hundred, I want to say, at home in the basement. We're taking the basement, but yeah, down to down to over forty, but not much more than that. Forty, fifty, that kind of thing. The stuff I love to work with, and you know, I whittle it down just to make it so that it's still fun to interact with, and it's not a full time job. You, know, you work a job and come home, you don't want to be working for too much longer at home. So the maintenance is a lot easier to deal with for me. So. Yeah. And I've got yeah, no bugs here. I'm so happy. <laughs> Any of my lizards are either Euromastix or skin. Carol Back and Cho Exotic of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you don't cause Corona. Yeah. Carol you Bass. Need throw, you need to throw a handlebar now, Cody. <laughs> I'm gonna rock the handlebar. I can't do the hair, man. I'm going bald. Can't can't pull the look off. <laughs> You're going bald. Are you like 19? Oh, there you go. Oh, I've been wearing a hat for 20 years, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Welcome to, welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brenda. Uh, Brenda Grant just mentioned. Holy cow, and where do you find the space and time to feed? And um, it's kind of the funny thing about the reptile industry. Like, it's super addicting, and a lot of people get in that problem where they don't realize how much time it's going to take, and all of a sudden they've got 50 or, or more animals, and, you know, they're getting home from work and spending three hours taking care of their animals. Well, that becomes your hobby and your passion, too. So, I mean, you make the time for it, right? Yeah. Yeah, give up a couple of those uh, public outings. We're all of them. <laughs> We're all of them. <laughs> Which is a lot easier to do now. Lots of time to give around. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot more free time these days. I guess that's easier for you to self-isolate, considering you just have to go upstairs now. I know, right? <laughs> Like, well, I guess if I had to sell us late, I could just close the store and stay in here. Yeah. Here's a question for you, too, with all the with the self-isolation, the COVID stuff that's going on. How has that affected your business? Like, what, what do, you, do you have to do anything differently now or what sort of precautions or what, what, what do you have to do? Basically, end? what we're trying to do is like we've got signs out on the front of the door and the, and the windows. And we're just trying to limit it to like one family group at a time in the store. So when one group comes in, we lock the door and it says what's going on. It says just to phone and then, you know, we'll let you through next. And then we're trying to do as much EMT and stuff as we can, uh, more curbside pickup deliveries if need be. So it's been pretty steady still. Like we were really lucky to gain a pretty good group of customers right off the bat. Um, and they like to support small. It seems like Red Deer really likes to support, you know, small local businesses. So that's been really good that way. People have been, you know, getting all their feeders and stuff. And so we haven't been too affected, but it definitely is slower for sure. 
you're focusing a lot on yeah, it's funny. Of your feeders too. And that's a big part of the yeah, lots of, yeah, lots of feeders, a lot of bugs, really. Um, tons of bugs. But then I've also noticed, like, since all of this started, it seems like so many more people are wanting tanks or, you know, a reptile that they've been wanting because, you know, they're sitting on Facebook looking at all the groups. They've got all the time to build the tanks up now. And what do you do when you're sitting at home? Yeah. So we yeah, just try to make sure that we're not making it's, it's kind of interesting right now, um, like, from my perspective, like, last year – I felt that we were kind of within a bit of a recession and it was um, we had the exposure of the show and that kind of offset that the local sales. Um, and when I say local, I mean, Canadian sales were maybe dropping a little bit, um, but it's been interesting lately. We've been really busy and we're having a hard time keeping up. Um, the guys at the shop, like, uh, like, you know, four week lead time, we went from like, say in November where the guys were fully caught up looking for stuff to do that now we're back to like over four week lead time, getting stuff done just cause we can't keep up. Um, but I think that we're going to hit a point where people are realizing they have to, you know, be a little more careful. I feel like right now it's more people are bored at home and thinking they need to spend money. And um, I'm, I mean, I'm hoping it doesn't happen, but I'm worried about that kind of point where it starts slowing down and people are being more careful with their money. I feel the same. Yeah. I got a couple of questions here. So uh, there's a Cody McMillan wants to know how the Chinese crock lizards are doing. If you have any eggs yet. So those guys are live birth. Um, they're doing really well. I was, they were hammering back earthworms today. Uh, but with them, it's just such a touchy thing because they, you really got to cool them down for that hibernation. So I'm going to give them this year to fully adjust to the, the new place after the move. And then next winter, I'm going to cool them right down and pair them up. Sure. The one male will breed apparently as soon as you put him with a female, he'll try and get her. But there, Daniel was getting uh, infertiles. So I'm thinking it's just a matter of getting them right cooled down, and then next year we'll yeah. try. Yeah, I think that can make a big difference. And, and yeah, that's that's the thing people don't realize too is sometimes when you make when you move or, or any kind of changes and stuff too, you can really throw your animals off for cycling and stuff. Like, just huge, yeah. Sometimes it takes an extra year just to just to get it going. And so. Yeah, I would agree. I was expecting my season to be ruined actually because of the move. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, it's been extremely productive so far. But. What would you say percentage wise? Um, I mean, or I guess maybe maybe more of is more of your focus going to be on trying to produce your own stock, or are you still bringing stuff in from elsewhere? Or? What kind of percentage of things are you producing versus, say, local breeders or, or bringing stuff in from elsewhere? Um, as far as the store is concerned, like, I'll put whatever I'm producing in the store. But I feel like a lot of the stuff that I work with um, is all kind of spoken for before it's even ready to go out. And there, a lot of them are kind of high-ticket stuff. So... Yeah, I'm going to have to obviously bring in some, you know, local breeders, beardies, crested geckos, leopards, all of that kind of stuff, because you got to have it. But anything that's, you know, available that I have that I produce will go in the store. But I think most of the stuff that's kind of going to go to the average person is like the bolas or the Euromastics. So still a lot of purchasing on the end. I think the key to survival reptiles. Sorry. I've got a great friend who's looking for a crested gecko, so I'll be bugging you for, for something soon, I'm sure. Got him. <laughs> Perfect. The, uh, the one thing I was going to say is, um, like, it's great to, like, use uh, specifically, same as, like, Jim and and Steve with the specialty reptile shops. Like, it's great to have that variety in there. Um, but I think the key to success is also having all that cookie cutter stuff like corn snakes and 
leopard geckos and ball pythons to get to get those starter um, uh, I guess uh, customers who are getting into their first reptiles um, to start them off yeah yeah it's hard to sell somebody a, a monitor that takes a thousand dollar cage for a first reptile <laughs> yeah yeah What's your no, yeah, we, what's that Oh, sorry, sorry. Now go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, uh, Steve, I was saying, yeah, he's just right into just all the monitors and the other stuff. But. Yeah, you got to have everything in the shop, like the cheapest, you know, Pac-Mans, uh, newts, skinks, all of that stuff. There you go. So a question just popped up here from Kelly McIntosh. Hey, Cody. Is there a water temperature that's ideal for breeding pink belly side necks? My pair still doesn't seem to be at that point yet. <laughs> um, I always keep them in the upper 70s. Kelly, if you need a couple more adult males, I got them for you. <laughs> <laughs> that a boy. <laughs> I think... Um, you kind of touched on it a bit, but I think one thing that a lot of new reptile keepers don't understand is usually the reptile is the cheapest part of the investment. Uh, like getting the proper setup and, and everything you need for it is uh, is what people don't realize. They get, you know, a $30 um, lizard, for example, and don't realize they're going to spend $100 just in a proper light for it. Yeah, well, for example, I'm not going to be bringing in knolls anymore um, because, you know, you got a $15 lizard, and I'm pretty passionate about knolls. Like, there's the really cool lizard. <laughs> uh, so it kills me, you know, to see them just go for, like, a, well, whatever. We got a, you know, a 10 gallon fish tank at home, no UV, nothing like that. So, yeah, I would agree that. It's funny, yeah. it, speaking of anoles, I, I've heard like guys in the States that are actually been successfully breeding them. You need a massive tank with lots of horizontal space. They need to be able to stretch out and, and exercise and, and be really active to actually get them to breed. Yeah, you can't have 20 of them in a 10 gallon and, and have them oh. be very happy. Oh. <laughs> Go figure, right? Yeah. You know. Um, I just uh, brought a question up, or uh, I guess more of a statement. Cody, you need to have sessions to keep uh, to teach people that would be awesome in charge of fee. Um, I'm assuming that I'm not sure what that's in regards to, but I'm assuming it's proper reptile um, like setups and maybe the naturalistic. Yeah, so you can send an EMT to uh, the reptile shop, Red Deer, at. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's funny because like those paint nights and whatever um, um, are are wildly pop popular right now. And I got asked if we would do kind of stuff like that and also like paint nights like at our shop. And I mean, it, it would definitely be a moneymaker for sure to like teach people how to do that kind of stuff properly. But there's so much involvement. In but not just, painting, right? Yeah, I'm not. Chris can teach the painting part. Yeah, of it. When you can pose. And then. Yeah. Greg will be the model. <laughs> well, they do need full figured models. So, yeah, that's a, probably. That's a whole different bowl of fruit. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> but now you get all those YouTube guys that have got those Patreon accounts, right? And they, they put out special time for those, you know, Patreon supporters to answer all their questions and teach them. So it is a good thing. Yeah, I saw Billy um, has one of those account, and it's funny. I thought that was just for porn, but I guess <laughs> not. <laughs> Learn something new every day. <laughs> so here's a question that, that uh, somebody asked is, what was, oh, what was it again? It was um, something about the most interesting or, or, or your favorite animal that you've had in your shop to work with. But then the second part of that that I'm going to add on is we get this asked all the time is what's your dream that's how to work with that you either have or haven't worked with. Everybody always asks us in every live. So. Okay. Uh, in regards to things that have been available, 
Um, oddly enough, I honestly at the moment have to say this Cuban false chameleon. <laughs> I've got this Cuban false chameleon and the thing watches you. He'll turn one eye and watch you and jump across the cage, try and get on you. So, so that's like not too crazy, but it is. Yep. yep. Yeah. So it's actually an anole, but yeah. Um, that Where did thing you is, get that from? Uh, actually I got them from Nelson. Okay. Uh, Tails and scales. Yeah. Oh, actually, I think that was the one. He had it, and he would have it sitting on his shoulder at the shows. Could I very well. Yeah. It was, was it a really young one? I mean, I wouldn't have known. Like, I thought it was full grown, but I'm not sure. No, no. Yeah, cool. this, this thing's crazy, man. He, uh, he'll jump right on your chest. So another crazy species. Anything real crazy species wise. So, oh, we're losing you for a second. Uh, and then, yeah, we, you cut off at the tail end of whatever you just said. Oh, I said anything um, that was super crazy that I was into ended up in my private collection and is still there now. Yeah. So, what's so, your like we got a blue tree monitor in the shop. So, in the shop, probably the blue tree monitor would be my yeah. favorite. But. Oh, those are amazing. Yeah, and then as far as stuff I could work with, Boland's Pythons, uh, hands down, would be my my big one, yeah. So, obviously, let's remove Komodo Dragons from the, the equation. What beyond that would be a dream reptile for you to work with? Like, besides the Boland's Python? Yeah, stuff that maybe is restricted here that we can't work with that you would love to work with. I guess maybe parentes or crocodile monitors. Yeah. After going to the um, after going to uh, a, what's that shop that we were at, Chris in California, um, Jay Prehistoric, yeah. like the water oh, yeah. monitors, man, like those are so cool. Yeah, there's some massive. I mean, in the retics. Well, stuff. and all the captive ones now too. Like, you know, they're so tameable at that point. Yeah. Oh, it's like a giant puppy dog. It's funny. So the giant water monitor we can all hold, and it was the uh, what was it? The um, the rock, uh, the rock iguana. The rock iguana, which oh, that's for me is like a dream of, uh, I actually got to hold it, and then that was like the one that Sam, who works there and runs most of the stuff behind the scenes, that's the only animal he's actually kind of afraid of, like or or has some trepidation working with. He's like, I've seen that thing bite a broom handle in half. So he's like when that thing gets grumpy, he wants no part of it. Whereas he's got like these giant pythons and monitors. Yeah. And he's got no qualms about dealing with crocodilia, yeah, whatever. This freaking rock iguana is the one that's like the herbivores, like, man. Like, I just <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Well, it's funny because that was right before we went to the anaconda, and we're all holding the anaconda, trying to pose for a video or for a photo. And he was right next to me. I'm at the head end, and it, like, I, I mean, it was, at the head. I, it, it, I mean, that was the worst person to be close to the head of this big yeah. snake. But, um, it was kind of funny. Like, it slowly grabbed his arm, and he you backed away it. right away. It was literally a warning shot, but, like, I'm like, I don't know what to do now. It so, was such a slow crazy. motion bite. You could, like, me and Ty were like, you're going to get bit, you're going to get bit. And Tim was like, he knew it was coming, and he just had to take it because he didn't want to. But he made sure he was in the way so Greg didn't get bit. And it was the big <laughs> slow bite, and he just grabbed his arm, and then yeah, like, and it was like just a warning, like it wasn't even. It was like, leave me alone, don't touch me. Yeah, yeah. Still just like bleeding and all punctured, and yeah. That'd be yeah. heavy bite. He's coming a mile away. Like, yeah, well, that's gonna bite. That's gonna bite. Oh, there you go. Like. <laughs> yeah, but it was funny because that was right after the rock iguana, and he like, like he had no issue with that, but he really wanted to be away from that rock iguana. Yeah, so I got the whole, which was made me so happy. And then as soon as I was done with it, who was it? Him or somebody grabbed it, and then it all of a sudden got really squirrely and angry. So he's like, "We're gonna put this again now." Yeah. Yeah, he wanted man. For me, Gila monsters. I wish we could keep Gila's here. Yeah, that would be 
Um, our buddy in uh, Portland has some, um, well, I think he's in Vancouver, Washington, but um, at the uh, the Pack and Wars show, I got to hold, actually, there was another breeder that had some that Chris got to hold as well. Like, yes, it's crazy they can have them there, and yeah, like, super tame. It's really cool. Yeah, the bee did some really good ones. Yeah, so I definitely wouldn't mind having some of those. Yeah, we got to play with some really cool stuff down there too. So, venomoids, but yeah, some different, all kinds of different cobras, some black mama. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So what was sorry? I'm sorry. Your dream, your dream reptile to work with that you can't work with. Yeah, really the biggest one would be Boland's pythons, but the only reason I can't work with them is I'm not exactly rich yet. <laughs> Just a money thing. Um, yeah. This is a good question. Any, any reptiles that you don't like working with? To be 100% honest, I shouldn't say it, but bearded dragons. <laughs> I don't like the fecal. I do not like cleaning up after bearded dragons. Oh, they're messy and they stink. Yeah, like that's anything like that or like uh, like golden geckos, stuff like that. Things that are just super quick and like, you know, day geckos too, gorgeous geckos. But, you know, when you got to catch them, you got to be so careful not to yeah. rip their skin. Yeah, tear the skin. That's, uh, that's yeah. Dang. I don't want to hurt you. Don't move. <laughs> Yeah. Not only that, but it's hard to keep their cages clean because, like, they just they just crap all over the glass. Yeah, and like you know, you can't touch them. You got to watch; they're not going to come flying out of the door. Yeah. For me, I probably. Do. I hate to say it, but well, I hate to say it, but for me, it's ball pythons. I've got no issue with ball pythons per se. I just I've never kept any. I don't have much. Like, I love them because they're snakes, which is great. But I just, as far as reptiles go, I'm at the bottom of my list. I, I like yeah. stuff that's they're just. A, I mean, they're they're a pet rock. They just sit there. And I don't have much interest in them because they're not. I don't know. I like. Uh, I'm more drawn to more of the feisty, uh, active reptiles. Those are the ones I like. You know, I love pits, pitch office and stuff. They're, they're very angry and bitey and both and, and just different things that are more a little feistier, a little more spirit in them. I like working with. So that's for me. That's for me. The bull pythons, I think I was going to say the same thing, and it's funny. For me, um, I ended up getting a couple, and now Emma's got one as well. And uh, I did find that moving them from the rack system to the cages, they are more active. But the frustrating thing for me is feeding them. Like, it, they're so temperamental whether they're going to eat or not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't dislike them. It's like picking your favorite supermodel, right? So the reptiles are great, love them. But I'm just saying, as far as the scale of, you know, a lot of people that they're at the bottom of it. Love all pythons. I'm just or saying, you get yourself in trouble. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I know that's good because there's a lot of people that that's all they work with, and that's fine. That's great. I, that's fantastic. They just have very little interest for me as far as keeping. Uh, Cody McMillan is saying, I'd love to work for with Borneo earlet monitors. Uh, those are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck at this point. Uh, yeah, exactly. I guess, well, and uh, you got to be rich. Yeah. yeah. I've, had good, I've had the good fortune of being able to see some and play with them in person, but you're not going to find very many anywhere, period. And there's, yeah. It's a gray area, so... I don't know if there's anybody working with them in Canada anymore. I don't think anyone has any anymore. Maybe either. more, maybe not. There were some people before. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we'll, yeah, we'll just leave that. We'll leave that around. unspoken. <laughs> yeah. Um, Larry Fudge is saying, question for Greg and Chris. What would be your favorite reptile reptorium that you have visited? Hmm. Well, Cody can answer this too. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, James, James shop was pretty awesome. Um, he gets a lot of hate in there, but I mean, he's got a lot of cool stuff that we don't see because uh, the retics and, and anacondas are restricted here. So there's a lot of cool stuff that we saw there, but uh, um, that guy in San Diego, I can't remember what his reptile shop was that, called. Like, that's a reptile, that, kingdom. reptile kingdom in reptile San kingdom, Diego. Matt, Matt, who all the ladies love Matt. Yeah, yeah he's uh, any of my female friends were like, Who is that guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, that that was for me, yeah, for sure. I would say like it was a lot of fun. Again, like super appreciate uh, Jay and those guys taking time to show us your stuff and that's that's way up there. And anybody that's got any kind of um, notoriety or, or following and stuff, they're gonna have a lot of haters and you know, I'm I'm not a big fan of people selling eggs, so I've got, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'll say Matt. Well, so Probably those two, but also, I mean, it's not a reptile store, but, uh, I mean, we were lucky enough because of people we know and then also because of the Scaled Show. Um, getting oh, behind the scenes at San Diego Zoo was just unreal. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll have to say, yeah, I'll change my answer. That was amazing. Um, to be able to go behind the scenes. And back, sort of backstage at the San Diego Zoo, I see all the breeding projects and stuff that they don't have out on display. And a heartbreaking part of that is to know yeah. that the Fijian iguanas they have there, they have so many, and they're so prolific, and they're, they're doing so much good work with them that they, and because of the restrictions, they can't do anything with the eggs. Again. They, they, they literally have to throw eggs out they're producing all these eggs like there's like pachina iguanas being produced there that they can't do anything with because of the restrictions and they would love to be able to you know they're, they're doing amazing work there and they're amazing people and their their hands are tied like there's nothing they can do about it so they've literally got clutches of eggs they just kind of throw them garbage or freeze or whatever Tons. So that's like heartbreaking and there's people that are I wish. Some life savings on a Pagina Guana. And there's nothing they can do about it because of restrictions. Uh, here's a question. Kelly McIntosh, do you have, do any of you have tips or tricks on breeding leopard geckos? Sounds basic, right? Question mark, LOL. Wait for spring. <laughs> I think cooling them down. Leopard gecko, so I can't answer it. It's funny because my kids had leopard geckos, and I and we had a male and female, and I just thought it was as simple as putting them together, and it didn't work. So <laughs> I can't yeah, answer that either. Steve Sykes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mark Scott. Lots of calcium too. I th I think cycling is a big part of it. Um, you know, with the temperature changes and uh, and just having adequate setups too. Here's a here's the thing too that people don't think about when they're breeding reptiles is they'll look online and they'll see tips and tricks from certain you know highly regarded breeders and stuff. But you got to consider where they live too. Um, there's different environmental conditions, barometric pressure, seasons, light cycles. Uh, temperature, ambient temperatures, and all that stuff. Where you live and where we live is different than where they live. So we may have to do different things than what somebody in Florida has to do, or somebody in California, uh, or even somebody you know, in the Midwest and the U.S. has to do. So, you know, there's 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 different things that we have to do that somebody else may, may or may not have to do. You can't just take it as gospel if you have to consider where somebody is, too. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I mean, you got you got to also consider the source too. Um, yeah. You know, depending on the, you know, everybody's in internet, uh, um, like it has the internet knowledge, and it's not always necessarily right. Yeah. Yeah, and ninety percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, you get you know the the Google experts, right? People that aren't speaking from their own experience, 
And that's and a lot of the care sheets out there are the same care sheet one guy made. Nobody wants to take the effort to make their own, so they cut and paste it, and it gets basically they're just parroting information from somebody else that may or may not be accurate, but because it's kind of taking it off by them, we can just recycle the same care sheet. You can see the wording; everything's the exact same. So consider the source always. It's funny because I think that's more prevalent nowadays. Like when we first started, your information wasn't so readily available. And the the information available was, I would say, you know, was was smart and uh, well thought out and, and by years of experience. Now people will look on Kijiji and, uh, oh, this guy, you know, this guy's doing it this way. It must be correct, but it doesn't always work. Yeah. I think everybody wants to be internet famous, right? So they'll just put crazy ideas out there and put for it. always pays to look at the success of who you're getting the advice from. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And have they actually worked with it themselves? Are they speaking from their own experience? Or are they, again, just, just relaying what they heard from somebody else? And if they're honest about it, that's great. Hey, I heard this from so so. Fine. If you're saying stuff like, this is what you have to do and this, this. What are you basing it off of? Is that from you? Like, you've done that? Yeah. I would say, uh, you know, ball pythons, bearded dragons, that's, uh, you know, we hear a lot of that kind of stuff. Like, we know a lot of people in the industry and uh, seeing how they do things, I would take their advice more often than, you know, anybody in these Facebook groups. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I always find any person who is 100% dead set, like you cannot do it that way. This is the only way to do it. Usually don't take that person's advice. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a hundred ways to do it. I say that so many, the, the clearest clue that somebody is inexperienced is they talk in absolutes. You have to do this, you have to do that. The more you know, and the more you, as you learn about these animals, the more you realize there's a million different ways of getting to that same you know, the same conditions and stuff. It's, it's all about, there's no one set way, one best way of doing anything in, in this hobby. And, and there's a million different ways of doing it. And as long as you get to those conditions the animal needs, how you do it is not really so relevant as to actually getting to that point. And there's a lot of different ways of doing it. So yeah, people are talking absolutes. And as soon as somebody says you have to do this or have to do that, I just tune them right out. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. It's funny that all the experienced guys, they all say the same thing. Like it's, yeah. You know, well, I also find that it's funny because um, being in this industry so long, uh, a lot of us who've been, you know, and I'm definitely not an expert, but we usually just take a back seat and kind of just enjoy the ride listening to people kind of make themselves look like idiots and mm -hmm. talk about how experienced they are. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate because the information is so accessible nowadays that people think they're experts. The way that calls themselves an expert run away from immediately. Yeah. The more you know, the more you realize the you less don't. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think we're all learning every day, but it's unfortunate yeah. the the way that the internet works nowadays. Everybody's an expert. Mm -hmm. So, uh, was there a question I missed? Uh, so here's the when getting a reptile, what signs should you be looking for in order to pick out a healthy reptile? Uh, it's kind of that's a pretty generic question, and it depends well, Cody, on species for sure. Cody, you answer that one. When you're when you're say you're bringing animals into the shop, or like what do you look for in a healthy reptile, and what do you tell people to come in to look for for a healthy reptile? So if I'm if I'm looking at snakes anyway. Uh, with snakes, I'm looking at one of the first things I'm looking at is the tongue. Uh, if the tongue's flicking regularly, um, you know, if it's flicking somewhat rapidly, if you have a, if it's not flicking its tongue, if it's flicking its tongue and it's really slow and the forks are stuck together, you could potentially have a respiratory issue. Um, with snakes, I would be looking for mites um, under the scales and around the eyes. Um, but you want it to be just strong and muscular. And then as far as lizards go, um, I'm always looking at, 
you know, how alert are they? You know, if their eyes are kind of drowsy and they're, you know, they're not very reactive, um, then that's usually not a good sign. It could just be cold, but those are some of the first things that I, that I look for for sure. Dehydration would be a big thing too, I would think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you get that loose skin that doesn't, loose you know, skin. just kind of hangs yeah. slowly, slowly comes back if you were kind of pinching it. But yeah, those are those are some of the mains, really. Just how alert and strong, you know, and obviously besides weight and whatnot. But. I, I think when it can be recommended, obviously trying to get uh, captive bred specimens, depending on what you're looking for, obviously is is your best rule of thumb. Like if you can find it captive bred, it, you know, it, you may pay more, but you're going to, you know, you always get what you pay for. So um, like when you're talking like green tree pythons or emerald tree boas, you know, you might be able to get them for a couple hundred bucks, but you're talking fresh imports you're going to deal with issues with them and I would rather pay for captive bread when you can. Yeah. I will always pay more for higher quality, well bred animals from, from trusted breeders that I know. Like, I'd rather, that's a hundred percent I'd rather go. The only time I'd rather, or the only time I look at, you know, walk on imports and stuff is stuff that's, that's not being produced, like stuff that people aren't actively working with. But yeah, I always like I want to. I want to when I breed stuff. I want to take the best examples and improve on that and make them better. I don't breed them. To breed them. Um, I want to help yeah. them with the entire quality and, and not just like colors and morphs and stuff. But I'm talking like robust, healthy animals that are like, good size and healthy. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just looking at this pinch test on reptiles. I would, yeah. I wouldn't exactly rely on that much, especially if it's like a bearded dragon or something. I'm more thinking like when I've gotten in, say, dehydrated, you know, wild caught snakes or something. You'll notice the skin is kind of flappy, and they're. But I wouldn't really do a pinch test like on a dog or something. No. Yeah. No. That's that wasn't why I would. That's why I put that one up there. I wasn't meaning uh, necessarily a pinch test, but like when you see like a, a lizard, for example, kind of shrink their body, you can see the skin is slow to kind of react. Is more what we were meaning. Yeah. yeah. Like for me, when when I look for for healthy animals, I want to look for clean, clear eyes. I want to see again active, healthy tongue flicking out when they're curious. And, and there can be different situations where if they're afraid, maybe the tongue sticks out. Um, that's not really a concern, but it's more overall. The overall idea of perception is: does it look like does it look like a healthy animal to you? Is the body full but not fat? Is it not super skinny? Not super lethargic? The, you know, the nose fairly clear. Again, in the mouth, you don't want to see anything going on that, that looks out of order there. So, and same thing with lizards, you want to see. Um, a, a, a firm enough body shape. You want to have plump legs, you know, the back legs especially. You don't want them all skinny and saggy. You don't want something that looks like a deflated tire. So you don't want something big and like, excessively fat either because that's just as bad. Um, one thing I was going to touch on too is like when you go into the pet stores, and I mean, I'm not talking just in general, but like animals that should be active. Um, you know, maybe not nocturnal ones, but ones that are like sleeping the whole time you're investigating them, I would say steer clear from those animals. There's obviously something going on if, if they're very lethargic and uh, look like they're trying to just conserve energy the whole time. Water dragons are a great example of that. You see tons of water dragons, eyes closed, crusted, you know, just laying there limp. Yeah. No, 100%. Yeah. Like that's, and, and you want to, you want to maybe not necessarily, like it's, it depends on the animal too, because there can be different reasons something is acting that way. You know, if it's a real active, bright store, then maybe something's going to be hiding because there's just too much action going on. Um, so it depends on the animal and the situation. Stuff too. It's not really it a does. Thing. And 
Yeah, that's why I was kind of prefacing it with like same thing. Some some reptiles are are nocturnal, so obviously you're going in there during the day. They're sleeping. That's not what I mean. But when you notice an at like reptiles specifically, really hide any uh, sicknesses as much as they can. So usually when they're very inactive and trying to conserve energy, it's usually not necessarily a good sign. And we got the awkward silence. <laughs> There's a question I was, uh, I was trying to find here. Uh, I'm trying to look through them now. We're kind of dying off here a little bit, but uh, if anybody's got any questions for Cody before we go or us, um, you know, let us know. Feel free to, yeah. to message us through this and... Uh, you know, keep this conversation going. We, we like doing this and uh, it's great that we can include some of the local uh, uh, people that, that are, you know, more well known and are doing or working with lots of different animals. Cody um, has got a pretty vast collection and it's really cool that he's translated being a kind of hobbyist um, and then working at a pet store to open up his own pet store. So it's really cool. Well, I mean, Cody's known for working with a lot of the uh, a lot of the ordinary species, you know, the, the commonly kept stuff, like the dragons and all that stuff. But he's kept a lot of really cool, interesting stuff. So. Yeah, I like that obscure stuff for sure. Yeah, me too. So, hey, those uh, rainbow <laughs> snakes there. How many of those have you got? What's going on with those? I got two point three. Okay. So I was very hopeful of getting eggs from the sunbeams uh, before we moved here. And I honestly, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was like, yeah, of course, sunbeams. Yep. Like, oh, I kept all the rainbow snakes. Oh, yeah, um, yeah I, uh, I was thinking I was going to get eggs, but honestly, I think she reabsorbed, like, from the move. Because she was huge. You could almost see eggs in her. And I don't think there's anything now, so... They're notoriously so difficult to work with. Much respect for yeah. trying to look at those. Yeah, their um, hydration with them, I find, is the biggest thing, man. If they, if those things run out of water, they're dead. Like they're very fossorial. Like they're just constantly just buried from from yeah. my understanding, anyways. Yeah, I fresh ones. I, uh, after I've acclimated them and everything for the first like year, I keep them on uh, slightly moistened blank newsprint. Okay. Uh, and then now all my long term animals are on uh, New Zealand's sphagnum moss. And you don't see them say, until you move them. Yeah. There's a couple of guys, when we were at a couple of the shows in the States, I was talking to a couple of breeders down there, and they had said that with those, they, the, uh, the way they were keeping them was just strictly in like deep Chilean sphagnum. Yeah. And spend the whole time hidden in there. And that's, and that was the most success they had with them was just keeping them in a, a dark, deep tub of basically just moss, sphagnum moss. Yeah, that's how mine are. The moss goes right to the top of the water bowl. And you don't see them until, unless you pull them out like I did there. But I normally don't because. I still reek like oniony body odor from when that thing must got me at the beginning of this. <laughs> it's all like I'm glad that it. I'm glad that you're two hours away and we didn't have to deal with it for this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> when I was rubbing my eye, I was literally rubbing hand sanitizer on my face, but it still won't go away. <laughs> Good selling feature. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So, I mean, is there anything oh, that you want to say to anybody out there, Cody? That uh, uh, here's your chance to pump your shop. Yeah. yeah. Just to anybody who's in the area, stop by. You know, even if you're not in the area, you know, we do a lot of deliveries and shipping and all of that. Um, I would honestly like Facebook and Instagram. If you check out the Instagram, that's where you're going to see more of like the private collection, more of the rare stuff. Um, whereas the Facebook, we share a lot of, um, you know, just stuff with the shop. But yeah, for anybody with questions or anything, just feel free, you know, fire me a message or come by the shop, any of that. 
Um, just for the people still on here, what uh, can you uh, just rattle off your social media um, addresses again? Yeah, uh, Facebook, we're the Reptile Shop Red Deer. And Instagram, we're the underscore reptile underscore shop. So, and then yeah. the email's the same. Email is uh, the reptile shop red deer at hotmail.com. Yeah, don't be fooled by his boyish good looks. This guy knows his stuff. He's been around a long time in the hobby, so. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, if there's any, any he stuff, may, he may only look forward to the one the guys are past. Yeah, I can get into the bar if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, He's got to show uh, ID, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, um, I don't know. Do we want to kind of wrap things up here? What do you guys want to do? Sure. Yeah. Cody's just got to go upstairs. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> that kid's got to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm never the last in line, so. <laughs> if you have, let me just have a quick scroll here and see if there's anything. Uh, anybody has a pass that we've, we've missed. It's, this is a new format for us, so it's, it's kind of it's a little bit harder to follow. I noticed that I can't make comments on any of these comments that people are making because I'm a guest or whatever it is. So oh, I can yeah. See see, comments, but I, I can't I, type or do anything. Well, I was going to say, I think that this has some definite positives doing it this way, but there are some negatives because – um, like in Facebook directly, I could respond specifically to people, but here I can't do that. Um, and obviously, if you can't do that directly at all, it kind of sucks. Yeah, which is fine. We can just talk about it. That's what we're here for. So that's, that's fine. Yeah. I, was Facebook just lagging a bit too much? or? Well, I don't know. It's different connections, too. Like when we do it all together, um, obviously, we're one connection. Right now, we're three different connections. So... Um, that adds a bit of complexity. So, I mean, obviously you can't go in your snake room. Um, that was apparent. <laughs> but we, had, we had a few hiccups here. Too. So, uh, well, I mean, we're going to do it in a couple weeks again, and we'll see how it works and uh, figure out what works the best for us. But I think just doing the lives in regularity again is definitely uh, what we need to do. Yeah, for sure. It's Thanks so much, man, for, for doing this. Um, and then once yeah, everything is kind of, you know, when, when, when people are allowed to congregate in public and, and do stuff, we'll uh, we'll have to make sure we come up and we'll do, we'll do something from from the shop itself, which would be great. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. have that. Yeah, it's a little harder to video when we're supposed to be six feet apart. So for the time being, this works. Um, but we would love to get up there um, to see the shop in person for sure. So um, once once that happens, then we'll do another live and uh, you know be able to be able to interact and show off your shop a little bit more. And it's a great like it's it's an underserved market. There's been very few. I mean, there hasn't really been a good reptile shop there ever. Like, there was issues with shop there years and years ago um, so it's great to see that uh you made the move and it's it's kind of a scary time to be doing stuff like that so all the power to you brother like, oh, thank you, know. you yeah it's uh it's been going good so far like i said it's uh we're glad we chose the place we did <laughs> well we've been just glad yeah, to no. see it. i can't think of a better guy to be running the shop there so thank you yeah yeah, no, um, uh, we hope that uh, that it's, it's successful for you. I definitely was quite surprised. Uh, I knew that you wanted to set up a shop. I, I didn't know that you were planning on setting it up in Repti or Reptile, in Red Deer, but uh, it, it, made, it made sense. I mean, it's an underserved market, and you've got a lot of small surrounding uh, uh, little towns around there, and... Uh, uh, I think you made the right decision and uh, we wish you the best. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. So um, I think we'll wrap this up now. Uh, but if anybody has any other questions for us, just reach out to us um, or, or Cody specifically, but we'll post up his social media contacts and uh, um, we'll hopefully be doing this again in a couple weeks. Awesome. 
All right. Thanks, Cody. No worries. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. You too. Yeah, you too. All right.